everybody, it's Kira and welcome back to my channel. So today I have my May wrap up for you guys. So I read a couple of books in the last month and I'm very excited about the vast majority of them actually. So um, before we do that, I have one book that I did buy in the last month and that is The Sun is Also a Star by Nicola Yoon. Um, I've read this a while ago now. It's It's been a minute since I've read this. Um, but I was at a bookstore with a friend and saw it and couldn't help myself, so now I own this book. I think I still like Instructions for Dancing better than The Sun is Also a Star, but I did really enjoy this book and I'm excited to now own a copy of it. So with that out of the way, let's get into the books that I read this past month. So first up, I listened to my first audiobook in a very long time, and that is Gay Girl Good God by Jackie Hill Perry. Um, this, it's narrated by the author, and it just tells her story of, um, like, growing up and being homosexual, but then finding Christ and how that changed her life, and, um, she really preached the gospel a lot in this book, which I really appreciated, and she said something in here that I really thought was really good, was that, like, God doesn't want to turn gay people straight, he just wants them to turn to him. And, like, for some people, those, like, homosexual feelings do go away when they become a Christian, but not all of them, and it's something you have to, like, work for, work through and work against. And I thought that was really good because I feel like a lot of times in culture we just kind of are like, when you come to Christ, everything will be great, and everything will be fixed in your life. And he does that, but it's not magic, and it takes a lot of work, and it's really hard, so... Um, I just very much appreciated her story, and she is a spoken word poet, so the audiobook was, like, really, really good. So, um, yeah, it was, it was a really good book. After that, I read A Court of Thorns and Roses. I have been kind of half wanting to read this for forever. It was one of those books that was popular on YouTube when I joined BookTube, and it continues to remain a popular series. And finally, it, like, I was meant to get to it, but then just never did. And finally, this month, I was like, whatever, let's, let's read it. So I read it. It was very good. Um, I mean, definitely not, like, the best book I've ever read kind of a thing, but it was very good. I really enjoyed Fair's character and um, how she, like, took care of her sisters. Her sisters annoyed me so much in this book. <laughs> it was like, help take care of things please. <laughs> um, but Vera's love for them really shone through in this book. I just really appreciated her um, desire to get back to them and to take care of them and to make sure they were all okay and such. The interesting thing, so then I'll go out of order here and say that I also finished A Court of Mist and Fury in this past month. I The other one I had to return to the library, but this one I still have. But uh, this one was definitely the best of the three. And it's so interesting what happens with Tamlin's character because you start A Court of Thorns and Roses and you're like, Tamlin is her savior and like, yeah, he doesn't really like her, but like, eh, he's keeping her there. If you don't know, Court of Thorns and Roses is like a slight um, Beauty and the Beast retelling, so it was interesting. I could kind of see like, oh, here's where this part is and kind of see the thread of that story running throughout A Court of Thorns and Roses. But because of everything that happens under the mountain, which if you've read the book, you know, um, in book two, you really get the aftermath of that and how Tamlin's character really changes or like more so reveals himself to be this not great person. And you're like, wait, what? Um, and then you have Resand in this book who... I really, like, I'm interested to reread A Court of Thorns and Roses now, knowing what I do about him and about his character, because I think it will read very differently. But I love that he, like, when Pharaoh was kind of slipping into this depression, he made her angry. He just used anger and spite to, like, draw any emotion from her. And I really, really liked that and their journey together and their relationship and how it changes over time and the things that they go through 
is so fascinating and I fell in love with it and all of the, the face stuff and the magic and the ending in this book, oh my gosh, was not expecting that. Um, there's like a big twist near the end of this book and was not expecting that. Um, I knew something had happened with her sisters, so I'm trying to keep things vague so I can keep them like mostly spoiler free. But um, yeah, I knew something would happen with her sisters, so that part wasn't the surprising part, but it was like who betrays them. That I was not expecting whatsoever. Um, and then I love the ending where she's like, goes to play spy. That was fantastic. And I was so excited for the third book to um, end that part. But yeah, I love favorite and recent like relationship and also just the whole like found family aspect that is in this book with Cassian and Azriel and more and Amarin and Reese and Feyre, uh, they kind of bring her in and I love just like getting to know all of these other characters as well and it was just a really fun time. Like I just really enjoyed my time reading these books. Then we have my annual reread of An Ember in the Ashes by Saba Tahir. This I actually read because my best online friend Shelly uh, decided to read them as well. So um, she's actually reading Torch too, which is insane. I was not expecting that. I'm just like, read the first book. If you don't like it, it's fine. But she actually really enjoyed Ember as well, which made me very happy. Um, this reread, I feel like I didn't necessarily spot anything new. Um, but stuff about the Nightbringer and Laia's power. The problem is that I've only read Sky Beyond the Storm like once, so like some of that like late stuff and like magic stuff is a little bit more hazy in my mind. Um, so I couldn't really like pinpoint everything throughout this one, but there's just something about this book that keeps me coming back and uh, it's just... <sighs> It's just so, it's definitely a comfort read for me, and um, I don't know how many times I've read this book, but it's been a lot. And then last up, we have A Spindle Splintered by Alex E. Harrell. So I actually got this because it is a short story, it's like a novella kind of a thing, um, because I was reading it in a thing at the library, actually, where I work. So, and it was talking about short stories, and this is, has to do with Sleeping Beauty. So. Our main character's name is Zinnia, and she has a disease of which there is no cure, which I don't remember what it's called. I don't know if it's a real disease or not, even. Um, but she has a disease that is doesn't have a cure. Um, but she fell in love with the story of Sleeping Beauty. And so for her birthday this year, her and her best friend Charm end up like charm brings her a like spindle like a splinter to prick her finger on so she does and then she actually ends up in another world in which it is one of the versions of sleeping beauty and so it's just about like magic and finding yourself and um sleeping beauty and there's it's kind of cool they um have a it's kind of multiverse theory kind of an idea where they go to or like there are different versions of Sleeping Beauty throughout whatever genre you can think of as well as like you know the original tale and like this version and then Disney's version and then this other version you know it's it was cool so it's short stories so there isn't like a ton of time to delve into everything um but it was enjoyable and I don't read a lot of like shorter stories so it was really cool to um, read something magical and short like this. So yeah, that's it. Those are all the books that I read in the month of May. Comment down below, let me know if you've read any of these books and what your thoughts were on them. If you want to scream about A Court of Thorns and Roses, I have finished book three by the time I'm filming this. Um, so I think I'm going to read The Court of Frost and Starlight and then take a break before I get into the next series because I just need something different. Because um, I read them all, like, really fast. But... Yeah, if you want to scream about those with me in the comments, I'd love that. So yeah, that's it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you want to follow me on social media, all my links will be in the description as always. My bookstagram is coming back. I'm very slowly posting pictures over there, so if you like bookstagram, it's in the description. Uh, yeah, thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye!